hello here we are again you download it and perhaps print it the model state emergency health powers act you have skimmed it through and read with care pages 25 to 32 if you have not done so stop go back and read it what are your ideas on this how do you feel do you feel more secure at ease well protected is it appropriate for the state to understand or interpret emergency response as a case for eradication of due process to set aside due process is it okay for the state to compel individuals to be subject to medical examinations and if they are opposed if they are opposed to this to make them in prisoners of the law because they have transgressed the law as a misdemeanor is it okay for the state to isolate individuals putting aside due process as like page 27 suggests page 28 section 504 the public health authority may exercise for such periods as the state of public health emergency exists the following emergency power power powers over persons in general to compel a person to be vaccinated and or treated for an infectious disease vaccination may be performed by a qual any qualified person authorized at the public health authority the vaccine shall not be given in the public health authority has reason to know that a particular individual is likely to suffer from serious harm from the vaccination. Treatment may be performed by any qualified person authorized by the public health authority. Treatment must not be such as is reasonably likely to lead to serious harm to the affected individual. Refusal. It gets interesting now. Individuals refusing to be vaccinated or treated shall be liable for a misdemeanor. You don't want a vaccine to protect you, you go to prison for that. If by any reason of refusal or vaccination or treatment the person possess, possess the danger, possesses the danger to the public health, he or she may be subject to isolation or quarantine pursuant to the provisions of this article. Enforcement. An order of the public health authority given to effectuate, effectuate the purposes of this section shall be immediately enforceable by any peace officer. The crossover between health, public health officers and police. Or is it the other way around? Is it that the public health officers become police and the police become public health officers? I understand, I also want to be safe, but why do we want to be safe for? Do we want to be, is the purpose and objective to survive? If the purpose and objective is to survive, the philosophy is that of survival of the fetus, social Darwinism. With that kind of logic and philosophy, most behaviors are justified in order to secure our survival. In New Hampshire, the state lives, the state lives by a very poignant phrase. Live free or die. We have to ask ourselves the philosophical question, followed by the ethical questions, the philosophical first what does it mean to live what is the purpose of life is life an end in itself or is it that we are pursuing a particular set of qualities in living
this set of proposals for legislation, of course, they have been criticized, and all kinds of advice has come out from different centers. But I want you to see what we're capable of in the name of health. In this course, throughout this quarter, we have been reading about all kinds of shortcomings of our healthcare systems worldwide and in the U.S. in particular. We know and we knew from the beginning that the world is not perfect, the U.S. is not perfect, nor is likely to become perfect. But we are in a process of becoming better, and you and I have a responsibility that we want to pursue particularly in the context of public health officers when we think of ethics. The ethical questions have to do with the values at stake. How much worth do we place on autonomy in the context of health? In so many contexts, in the process of promoting health, we give autonomy the highest regard. Why, in the case of bioterrorism, would be opposite? I understand the stakes are high. But if we want to understand the future, we must understand the past. And as we consider regimes that have done good to society in the context of health policies, like the Nazi, state. I know, it's so different. The U.S. is not the Nazi state. We fought them and we won. I am for that. The question is, will bioterrorism change the order and the hierarchy of esteem for U.S. in the context of ethics as we think of public health threat? On page 29, the proposal continues. Criminal investigation, recognizing that during a state of public health emergency and any specimen collected or test performed may be evidence in a criminal investigation, any business facility or agency authorized to collect a specimen or perform tests shall provide such support as is reasonable and necessary to aid in a, any and a relevant criminal investigation. Oh, and it goes on. The state can impound property without need to compensate financially. The state can take over individuals and incarcerate them. The state can do all kinds of things in order to protect them. Let's take, out their, take away their liberties so we can protect them and keep them alive. In conclusion, I read from a critique Mr. Doctor of Jurisprudence, a lawyer and an MPH graduate, Edward Richards, Director of the Program in Law, Science and Public Health, and Catherine Patbon, a physician and also an MPH graduate from LSU School of Medicine. There is no need for any state to enact the Model State Emergency Health Powers Act. It is critical to avoid overreaction and the passing of ill-conceived legislation during a time of crisis. Did you see the date when this was published? October 23, 2001. Only one month after the terrible day that will live in our memories. States should determine what changes in their own laws will allow them to carry out their state emergency management plans. Legal talent in public health law practice must be consulted. Otherwise, we may end up losing our liberty for the sake of keeping our lives. <laughs>